Thank you for that introduction, Rebecca. I appreciate it. And thank you all for being here. Uh, Mid Rugby International World Cup, uh, Mid Exams, and our time is of the essence, so I appreciate it. At 6 o'clock in the evening, I'm sure you have better things to be doing than spending time here, so we really appreciate your time. Time is of the essence. Um, to kind of <laughs> take on from that introduction, I am from Ireland, hence my accent. So if you uh, struggle to hear or uh, take anything in from me, I apologise. We, uh, we speak quite fast in Ireland, I pronounce the word quite quickly. So uh, please, uh, please bear with me. But it's okay, because I have my colleague here, Matthew Gray, who is a native South African, so a big warm welcome for Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> but just sort of a Matthew. Matthew didn't graduate from Selmach, did you, Matthew? Yes, so. To make sure this is on. So please don't leave the, uh, the building right now. So um, I must confess, I'm an Ike. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but but um, my wife is from Stellenbosch. She's actually a Rhenish girl. So um, hopefully that's a good start. Um, and most of my family are, are Marty's a little nice. So I've got strong allegiances. Um, and I will confess and, and give it to you guys. Obviously, you've won more uh, varsity cups than that we have, so that's all good from our side. But we went for a great reason because uh, the Irish are very nervous for the weekend. Uh, <laughs> it's a big pity we're not playing South Africa this Saturday because me and Matthew are together, so I was hoping for a bit of a, a bit of banter back and forth. But no, we'll be getting smashed by New Zealand. So. Um, but it's okay, it's okay. We'll see what Japan do on Sunday again. Anyway, anyway, enough rugby talk. Um, to echo the saying of the fact that we believe here at LinkedIn, everyone or anyone with any background should have equal. Oh. So you can hear me here, huh? Technology always fails us. We need it. No. So uh, to echo Rebecca's saying, we believe at LinkedIn, everyone uh, from any background, any race should have equal opportunity, or should we say equal access to equal opportunity. So that's what we're here today to discuss is how you can rock your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> and how we can make you uh, have a better digital footprint. Um, I'm a senior account uh, manager within LinkedIn. I'm from Ireland, but I work in the South African market. So my role is to work with some of the largest employers in the South African region to help them find you, graduates, hard to find candidates and people with rare skills. So I was sitting today with a couple of companies who are all asking me, how do we engage, attract, and develop talent like you? So I'm here today to help you understand the other side of it. How can you put yourself in front of the right employer at the right time and use LinkedIn as that platform? So, I'll have to stand up here because the microphone let me wrong. So our agenda today, we've done some introductions, had a bit of banter about rugby. Um, we'll move into why LinkedIn, a bit about our platform and what's happening with it today. We'll talk about Rock Your Profile, what that means. We'll also discuss uh, a recruitment demo. And what that is, is basically um, discussing how the people within global organizations are using LinkedIn to physically search for people like yourself. So we'll talk about best practice there, what they're doing, and I'll show you maybe a live example that if I was a recruiter in one of these businesses, what would I be doing on LinkedIn to find someone with your skill sets coming from Selmosh? We'll talk about alumni. So when you graduate, what happens? Uh, we have a lot of data and intelligence on Stellenbosch University's alumni and where they go to work. Uh, you know, in the first 12 months where they go afterwards and what the trends are for people like yourselves leaving the university. So I'll explain a bit about that, give you some insight, and then discuss a bit of mentoring. And can we tap up alumni? And can we understand, can we reach out to alumni to help us further our network and gain a better experience that you're in the world of work? And then we'll wrap up with a Q&A and a selfie. All right? <laughs> selfie with everyone in the room. But to give you a brief introduction into who I am as a person, I started out in talent acquisition 10 years ago as a recruiter. I started out um, in college, I was in university, uh, I was doing my master's degree in international business. I hadn't graduated, it was May, I was still sitting exams and I applied for a job. I applied for a job with a company I didn't know the name of and a company I didn't know much about. I got one interview and I ended up getting that one job and I was a recruiter. And I recruited for IT talent for some of the biggest organizations in Dublin, uh, in EMEA. And that led me to LinkedIn. After four years being a, a technology recruiter, I ended up getting an email. And I got an email off a LinkedIn recruiter. And I went through a process, and within two or three months, I was then sitting on the other side of the fence, and now working with LinkedIn, 
and helping them educate their clients on how to attract and retain talent like yourself and like me at that stage. Going through a process. I hadn't graduated, I was still doing a thesis, and I found myself with the first job I could. But I couldn't thank recruitment enough. If anyone has ever thought about it um, or ever experienced it, the recruitment world is uh, also a muscle, but it taught me a lot about work. It taught me a lot about industries, and I thought a lot more about sales. So I can't thank it enough. But I'm now at LinkedIn over five years, and I'm really enjoying it. So November is my fifth year anniversary. I think Matthew may beat me. Are you on six or seven, maybe? Or? No, less. Oh, man, nice, okay, so I went on one thing then this weekend. Okay, great. But I suppose why LinkedIn? So let's start with, well, what is LinkedIn? And, and actually, we'll start with a bit of a, an interaction. So out of the room and anyone in this room, who has a LinkedIn profile, please put your hand up. Nice. Wait, keep them up, please. Keep them up for a second. We need evidence. We need evidence. <laughs> Hands up, pause. <laughs> Very right, interesting. So everyone's fairly engaged with the platform. How many of those people who put their hands up don't have a LinkedIn profile picture? Don't be shy. Okay, well, we'll cover that later on, but it's a key element of why you should have one. Okay, so we'll get to that. LinkedIn's vision is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. And again, that is you. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about why organizations use LinkedIn and how that can contract yourself. So the power of LinkedIn, so we're now at 640 million members globally. When I started LinkedIn five years ago, we were at 300 million members. In South Africa, when Matthew joined, I think it was about two and a half million members, and that's about three or four years ago now. In South Africa alone, we have eight million now. So that's the type of growth. Our fastest growing demographic, or people signing up, is graduates. Again, every single employer out there that we meet with on a daily basis is asking us how can we attract them, how can we attract them, where can we get them. Okay, so that's what we're here to do today, is talk to you about how you can use LinkedIn for that digital footprint. In terms of why our members are on LinkedIn, which is you, well, you're here to connect. You're here to connect to other professionals, colleagues, friends, um, people you used to work with, people you used to study with, globally, not just locally, maybe people move abroad, but also you're here to stay informed. LinkedIn is one of the fastest growing platforms for content and digesting content. So you can learn so much from the content that is uh, feeding your news daily. Whether it's industry news, um, whether it's something to do with uh, interview tips for maybe preparing for something, an interview with a client, or maybe it's just gathering information on a customer or, sorry, uh, an organization that maybe you have an interview with, which we'll get a bit to later on. And fundamentally, it's get hired. Build your personal brand and your personal career. And having a digital footprint will allow you to stand out. I think. In today's day, standing out from the crowd is probably harder than ever, given the, uh, you know, the access to information, the access to things like LinkedIn, but LinkedIn can give you that platform to do that. Um, you can engage with anyone. You can send a connection request to anyone you wish with a simple note, and we'll talk about that later on, but it's not that hard to start building your network uh, in certain industries or certain verticals, or again, just people that you know um, through other avenues. So why are companies on LinkedIn, which is most important? Well, we kind of discussed it already. They're here to hire. They need to find you. So they need to attract and engage and retain the best talent they can find. And ever, ever so often, or ever so prevalent nowadays, is not only when they attract them, they're, they're investing in developing you. So um, internal uh, learning. So what can they do to develop your skill sets so that when you leave that organization, you're also the best uh, professional that you can be. LinkedIn's motto, actually, um, is about developing us so that if we leave LinkedIn, that we are the best professional that we can be. So they're all, you know, in, in today's day and age, the average person only stays within a, a certain company for, you know, two to three years. It's, it's long change when, you know, maybe our parents or grandparents are working in companies for 20, 25, 30 years. That doesn't happen anymore, especially in millennials. So we move on every two to three years on average. And in LinkedIn, they know that when you come in the door, that, that if you're going to leave, we're going to leave, you're going to leave with the best kind of assets and tools that we've given you over the years. You're going to leave a better person, really. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I've, I'm still working there, because it's so ins inspiring to do that. But the other businesses, besides hiring, they're here to market themselves. Okay, so they're here to market their products. They're here to market their services. And they're here to put that in front of the right audiences, which in, in some cases could be you. And then they're here to sell. So they're here to sell those products. So they want to hire the best people. They want to market themselves out to the audiences that they care about. And they want to sell as much product as they can, because that's what companies care about, profit. Okay, but they can't do that without you, the people. So when it comes to your profile, 
where do we start? So we're going to rock your profile now. Well, it has to be a profile picture, number one. So we covered that already. So whoever doesn't have one, you need to get one. It's okay. It doesn't have to be a professional photo. You know, I do have a professional photo, but LinkedIn did that for me for free. So I don't think I'd probably have one if that didn't happen. I was at an event and it took place. So they had something set up. But like, all it takes is a white wall, um, an iPhone camera, or any sort of camera of decent quality, and you can get a good one that looks in, in somewhat professional. It's not about a selfie with five other friends or at a party or at a rugby match. Um, it's about something that's personal to you, whether it was um, your graduation day, uh, whether it was something like that, something that's uh, a little bit more professional. But again, it, the reason that you should have a picture is really you get nine times more engagement by just having a picture. It's so simple. Uh, but yet so far more effective. You get 21 times more profile views, and you get potentially up to 36 more messages if you're going to get targeted for opportunities. So please, whoever doesn't have a picture, get one, okay? Um, it's imperative, and it gives a face. People like dealing with people, and if it doesn't have a face, it, you know, it's, it's untrustworthy, so to speak. It's like, you know, how, how, many, how many people accept a friend request off Facebook if someone doesn't have a profile picture? No. And he certainly wouldn't do it on Tinder or any other platforms. All right? So it's the exact same thing. All right? You don't know who's out there. But in two, add your industry. So LinkedIn's profile is not just a CV. Okay? It's not just, oh, let's have a CV or let's put out, I am a, an educated, I am a you know, progressive salesperson. I'm really enthusiastic in this. It's about building something that's incredible to you. Okay? It doesn't have to be just copy and paste from a CV. Think about what you're passionate about. Um, think about what... I suppose, um, what industry you want to enter. If you're studying engineering, talk about that. Talk about how your passion is that. If you're studying accountancy, talk about that. So again, it doesn't have to be a copy and paste from a generic CV. Your CV is usually with LinkedIn is maybe the afterthought for an employer. They'll get your profile, they'll assess you, and then they'll ask for your CV. So it usually is your, it's your, it's your first impression. So make a count. And it's not just a, a draft CV. So again, members with, with a, a highly engaged um, kind of I suppose detailed industry is going to get way more engagement as anything. So draft a compelling one. Uh, and then next is your summary, your elevator pitch. So again, it's not just a copy and paste I am really passionate about. It's something that stands out, stands out from the crowd. And again, it's your first impression. So make it count. And no longer than, you know, again, it's not you know, essay after essay about who you are. Make it short and snappy. It's an elevator pitch. If you had 30 seconds sitting with someone, you know, what would you tell them about yourself? What are your key strengths, your, you know, your, key, uh, your key ambitions? The next is detail your work experience. So if you're doing work uh, that is outside the curriculum area, you're doing something part-time, talk about it. Um, if you're doing something um, that is maybe impactful, um, talk about it. Okay, and again, five more, you, you're, you're, you're likely to get way more connection requests, way more profile views, and way more messages when you fill out this content. So is there anyone in this room, or, or sorry, again, show of hands for people that are I suppose, have a, a profile. So everyone that has their profile, have they filled out every single section of their profile? So hands up, may every, whoever feels that they've filled out LinkedIn is fully to the fullest. Hands up if you have. Okay, so it's probably about a third, maybe less, of people that actually have a profile. So it's imperative that you spend your time when you can, just filling out the profile and, and doing the little things that go the extra mile. Want to talk about it? In terms of add examples of your work, we briefly talked about that. So as much as you can, whether you're studying or not, again, if you're doing anything within the, the curriculum here that can stand out to you, or again, if you're doing anything um, outside of campus, it's not, if it's a part-time job, if it's anything like that, again, talk about it. Okay, show what you're passionate about. If it's, you know, if you're working in a pick and pay or something like that, talk about, well, it's customer experience I'm passionate about, I love dealing with the people, um, and let people see beyond just that little job title. Okay, so again, describe it, um, and again, make that first impression about why you like to work there. Add volunteer experience. That's really passionate these days. A lot of organizations are looking at people that are actively volunteering. So if you are doing something, again, um, that is you know, for charity or for something that's giving back to your community, please talk about it. Um, the little things go an extra mile, and again, it helps you stand out from the crowd. If you're spending time um, putting it into good work, again, put it online. It's not about boasting that, oh, I, I do some charity work. It's great. No, like you're, you're doing something that makes an impact. So again, talk about it. Um, and that all can be done by adding things like skills, um, it's a skill section, so this is your drop down, it's got many skills, so again, fill out what you're passionate about, what your skills are, your strengths, and again, let people find you. It's that simple. Um, in, in terms of, I suppose, the student journey, I now want to talk about alumni and what happens, well, when you have a, you know, a solid 
um, kind of profile and you're going out to market or you think about, okay, well, if I've moved on now. I want to talk to you about what happens when you leave uh, Stellenbosch, because this is the alumni. Jumped in there. Yep. So um, I, I thought I'd just, just give you some kind of practical insights um, on how this kind of comes to life. So I'm a, I'm a hiring manager for LinkedIn. I run LinkedIn business in sub-Saharan Africa, and we are actively hiring um, local South Africans, uh, individuals from East and West Africa to join our Dublin team. Um, and I look I purely hire off LinkedIn, right? So uh, I will see a profile. Uh, the first thing I'll see is obviously your, your profile image, right? So I want to see a professional image. Um, and um, I'm sure we've, we've all got um, some smart clothing and we can get, get some good, good headshots um, going as well. Also, you know, if that's not you as a, as a, as a professional, if you maybe want to get more credit in that space and really express who you are, that's totally cool as well. Um, you know, the, 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 the kind of industry, the world has moved on from kind of suits and tie territory um, of, of previous uh, decades. So your, obviously your name, your, your profile pic, and then there's a headline. Chris went through the headline. That is hugely important for me um, if you want to stand out, right? So, you know, if you've, I know it's very different if you are an experienced, uh, uh, someone experienced within a company and you are a, you know, senior engineer at uh, Amazon or takelot.com where I was earlier today, um, you can have your job title. But you guys, obviously, in your final, you're busy studying. You know, what are you passionate about? What are you studying? You know, what are your big ambitions? I'm sure there's a lot of big dreams out here. I want to see that on kind of your headline and because it allows you to stand out from the crowd. And Chris is going to go through some of the, the employers, um, the top employers that, that uh, recruit standard watch grads. And over many, many years through the data, we can see that the, those that, that really have been using the platform. Um, and then you, you have a, a summary, right? So it's, it's, you can put a few paragraphs in, but we have what we call above the fold. So pretty much one sentence that's gonna snapshot you. So you've got your headline, but then maybe what you've studied um, or, or what you aspire to be. You know, maybe you've got a startup that you've been running on the side or show me something different in terms of crafting that message. Um, and really spend some time writing, writing that out um, and, and getting that right because it's the small attention to detail that 20% of the people don't do, 80% are look relatively the same that can really allow you to stand out. Um, then, then obviously you, you, you've, you've detailed your, um, your, your education um, kind of history because I suppose a lot of you will, might have limited work experience, although you know, maybe some, some you know, have some good work experience to put in there. Um, a recommendation is, 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 Chris will get to it uh, shortly, where you can have uh, recommendations. Um, so you go to your lectures, go to your tutors, go to your peers, and get them to recommend as to, you know, what you stand up, what, why, why are you, you know, you're claiming X in your headline, how is someone backing you up in, in, in you know, the recommendation, make sure it's authentic. Um, and then we also said listing your skills. So LinkedIn's actually recently got online skills, so you can do a quick online course, be it in job engineering or be it in, you know, there's thousands of different quizzes that you can do where you get an official stamp next to your name that you actually have the skill. Increasingly, that's going to uh, push your name to the top of the recruiter search list when recruiters are searching for people like yourself. So just small little hacks that, that, that I really encourage you to, 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 yep. to spend time on it, to get it right. Um, every single one of our clients that we've worked with, we've worked with use LinkedIn to research and build talent pools of grads. They're spending time on campus, absolutely, <coughs> but a lot of you are, are researching them uh, oh, like, uh, you know, at the same, same time. In fact, the tides might have turned a bit where you might actually have a, a range of employers to choose from. You know. Yes, for current job. You actually know that you know, if it's the big five consultancy firms are all looking for people like you, and you can actually choose. What, what a great opportunity, but that's not the case for everyone. Um, so yeah. just take this on board, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously take some Q&A and keep, keep interacting. Yeah. Definitely, and I'll show you my profile at the end as well and go through some of the things Matt talks about. Um, but I wanted to focus on uh, alumni. 
So what it looks like to be a Stellenbosch alumni and some of the data and the stats that um, Matt mentioned when, about when you leave here. So here we are, uh, engineering is the top field of study at Stellenbosch University from 2014 to 218. We can see on the left hand side it gives a breakdown of year and Stellenbosch University graduates by year on LinkedIn. Okay, so in around the 4,000, a total of nearly 20,000 graduates. We can see the top field of study, 214 to 18, is engineering, followed by business and marketing, followed by accounting, business admin, social science, psychology, and then legal studies at the end. This is what we're seeing. It's the data we see about people. So how do we get this data, you might ask? Well, it comes from people like yourselves filling out your profile saying you are Work or study at the University of Stellenbosch, and then you go and work for a business, and then after that time you move, etc. So that's where we're picking up. We're picking up on multiple touch points on people doing things on their profiles. What that looks like, actually, uh, too late. Like I was going to interact with there, and I was going to ask. This is the top employers by location of people that used to study here. So we can see consulting and finance firms dominate the top ten. PwC, number one, Deloitte, and then interestingly, Retail, ShopRite, number three. We have Oricon, Kappa Bank, EY, City of Cape Town, and Vesa. So huge, and we see Cape Town as the number one top. So these aren't moving too far away. Uh, top skills of graduates seems to be data and analysis and engineering. And to give you some idea of what all our customers are trying to ask for is data analytics, data science, and engineering uh, talent. They're all competing for us. That's maybe, if you're in the engineering space, that is probably what Matt is getting at, is that it's potentially becoming an employee-led industry, not an employer-led industry. Therefore, that you have multiple choices um, to pick from, or you could be way more due diligent about who you work for and why, uh, versus, oh, well, I just need a job. That's dependent on if that's the case. What I'd also like to talk on is recent graduates from Stellaboss lean toward engineering-focused job functions. So top current industries for grads, professional services, we touched on financial services, and then top current job functions, engineering as well. And actually the first place you go to, there seems to be a big trend as well within the financial services and consulting space. So PwC tops it for, both, for where most of them are, and then where the most of them first go as well, which is interesting, along with Deloitte, ShopRite, EY. And then on the top, uh, on the right hand side, we see top number one job industries, professional services, finance, government and retail. So technology is actually quite low down the list considering a lot of people are studying engineering. So it's interesting data. Um, it's interesting. We'll be sending this on to, uh, to back afterwards so she can send it across if anyone wants to have this to hand. But it's, I think it was important to give you an idea of what's happening with people that used to work here and where they're going to give you an idea of the trajectory um, where you want to take yourself. But the beauty about alumni is it is a massive network you should be tapping up. You should be tapping up your connection, connections and alumni for help. Um, if you are studying engineering, connect with some engineers and some big companies that used to work here, or used to study here. It's quite simple to do. Um, you can run a search, you can look at university. I'll show you in a few minutes if you wish. We can look at University of Stellenbosch. We can actually look at where they work and then find their profiles and connect with them. You should be doing that. Um, I'd also like to touch on, you know, it's asking for help around a mentor. So mentoring is now a, a large, um, industry and people are really interested in mentoring people um, and giving back. So, if you are a Stellenbosch University alumni, uh, you may want to come back and mentor two or three students in certain areas. Um, they might not necessarily, I'm not saying they'll get help you get a job directly, but they may indirectly be able to introduce you to the right people at the right time. So, how many in here maybe have looked or thought about sourcing a mentor outside of Stellenbosch? Anyone? No. If you want to stand out from the crowd, there's your, there's your 10%. Um, you're going to stand out by doing that, by reaching out to someone in a similar industry that you care about for the future, in a company you might care about, that used to study here. I definitely think that's a, a way of standing out. Yeah, so um, Luke McKenzie was here a couple of years ago, I think. Um, so Luke is my boss. He ran Google for 11 years in South Africa and in the UK. He's a marketing alumni. Um, He's probably going to get bombed, <laughs> bombed with lots of mentor requests, but he's always said he's been surprised that actually how few people have maybe found him on the platform and, and asked him for advice. Um, and that's, again, if you want to stand up and do something different, it's probably it's quite an obvious suggestion. Don't be shy. Um, 
And I think it kind of goes back to earlier in Chris's uh, slide deck where our vision as a company is to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. What gets me out of bed every single day is to fly that to sub-Saharan Africa, which is my territory. And we can actively track the number of impacted hires that we've had through the LinkedIn platform. And those are lives created, also, uh, lives uh, changed with, with a new job. And ultimately, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, every new job can impact 3x the amount of families in terms of new uh, income generated. So, like, that is 100% uh, creating economic opportunity. It's, it's helping businesses get on the platform. If they've got a startup to reach out to investors or get their brand out there for you to, as talent to, to stand out, there's many different ways. We own by Microsoft most valuable company on the planet who also got a very similar vision as well um, and very exciting kind of growth that's why LinkedIn's on such a, a rapid kind of growth trajectory just lastly we talked about kind of that, that those member numbers so by the time you guys walked in here today and by the time you leave we would have filled the whole of Newlands rugby ground with new members on the platform globally um, so it's growing really, really quickly, which is great, and that's obviously fueling the, the whole economic opportunity piece, of which what, it, what I wanted to mention is the mentoring piece is, is key. Get help. It's difficult. It's challenging. When I graduated from UCT, I did not know what I wanted to do, and I was kind of fearful. Um, we didn't really have LinkedIn back then. I, was, I won't tell you kind of how old I am, but um, yeah, you can use these platforms to your, your benefit. So we'll be around later to, to help you. But definitely, thanks, Matthew. I think so. Again, um, he was just describing how Luke doesn't get many mentor requests or mentee requests from people. So, again, that's something we're passionate, they're passionate about doing. And there's a lot of maybe people that could be introduced uh, from the career services by that are uh, services area that are alumni and that are doing work with yourself that could easily be introduced as well as individuals that are looking for um, you know students to mentor. Um, so then again, reach out. Don't be afraid. I think is the biggest is the biggest takeaway. Um, you know, you know, what can they do? They can they can reply to you and say no, sorry, and they can do that politely. So, you know, don't be afraid. So what happens after that? Um, what can you not outside your power? Well, it comes to advertising on LinkedIn. So companies are investing in putting jobs on the platform with people like myself and Matt, and they're again trying to um, influence how they hire people. So learn what's out there, boy. Browsing job descriptions. You know, be be inquisitive on LinkedIn. Um, it's a search tool, so go to the top and search jobs. Search anything. Um, search engineering. Search uh, accountant. Search whatever you're interested in, and just look at the types of companies that are potentially hiring for you, and get a bit of a grasp of so what's happening. Again, you can follow that trend, click the company, and then see you might have alumni that work there, and, and go to that avenue. So there's plenty you can do. Um, I'll show you that maybe in real time as well in a minute or two. What you can do outside of that to look at jobs is actually you can set up jobs alerts. So in real time, you can set up an alert that if a new job in engineering or a new job in accountancy or a new job in something that matters to you uh, gets created or posted on the platform, you can get alerted and you can be one of the first applicants. So has anyone here heard or has anyone here set up a job alert? Nice, a couple. Okay, great. So again, you can set up a job alert. Uh, make sure you're first, first to, to know about it and get your name in the process with that uh, you know, jazzed up profile that we just talked about. Uh, and maybe you go to an alumni in that company. So imagine applying for a job in a business. You've just updated your profile. It looks great, looks the business. You've got a nice picture. And then you actually reach out to someone who's an alumni there. So you've done, you've done a couple of things to put yourself in the firing line. And um, you reach out to somebody who's to study. Hey, actually applied for a job there. Not sure if you could maybe assist or if you, if you could uh, maybe even take me on as a mentor as, as I, I, I aspire to work in that company someday, whether it's this job or the next. You'd be surprised how many people are willing to help. Um, the next piece is when you set up your job alerts, what happens after that? So you get your interview, right? You're happy out, great, brilliant. I have an interview in Take A Lot. I have an interview in a, in a small startup or I have an interview in a big global organization. Well, you should check out LinkedIn to get every single piece of research or in, um, information on that business. LinkedIn has so much data on, um, on talent, on organizations, on what they care about. And this will help you, on, uh, one, maybe even decide, is this an organization you feel that you'd like to work for? And then when you do go into interview, you go really, really well prepared. So things like, okay, you know, if they're posting something that's, again, charity related and, and you have an interest in that, maybe that's something you can reference in an interview 
um, or maybe it's going to be on your CV for when you apply for it next time. So again, it's, it's using the power of LinkedIn to find out as much information as possible on that organization, so when you walk in that door, you couldn't be any more prepared. Um, I went into a LinkedIn interview five years ago and, and not really knowing a lot about LinkedIn. Um, I went in with, a, with a, a bit of a fear of the unknown. I went in for, for an hour and a half interview and I came out um, knowing a lot more than I went in. But I used LinkedIn as a platform to, to, to research LinkedIn. Um, so do it, check it out, see what's happening. You can follow influencers. So um, Discovery, big customer of ours, big global organization, but Adrian Gore is, is, is very active on the platform. Um, posting about innovation or technology or what's, what's the business updates. Um, there's another business called Outsurance, um, um, and I, I can't remember the, the guy's name, is it Matty? David Matty? Yeah. Danny Matty is, is the CEO there. Again, very active on the platform about posting what his business and his organizations care about. So you can use things that the CEO cares about going in for an interview with whoever it may be. So you're aligning directly straight to their, to their, to their core values, if that's what you have an interest in. So what I'd like to do now before we kind of conclude is I'd like to show a bit of a live demo what people are doing in talent acquisition or in recruitment companies or in businesses to target people like yourself and also have a look at the profile as an example. So what I'm going to do is, technology better not fail me now. I'm going to end show here and do a live onto my LinkedIn So bear with me, I'll just join the what spot here. So I'll just load it up. Doesn't work yet. So I'll show you my profile to give you an example of what we kind of talked about today. So you can all judge me. <laughs> So what are you doing here? So I've joined the LinkedIn Africa team, so I have a banner. I have a banner up that is basically my team. Um, I have my, my title, Senior Account Director, Growth Markets, Work Smarter, Not Harder. That was the headline that Matthew was talking about. You don't have to put a job title in, you don't even have to say uh, currently studying. You can put in something that care, you care about within that that gets that attention. You scroll down here. I'd actually like to show you this. There's actually something called, uh, you can actually indicate to the network that you're open to an opportunity. So when a someone or an individual comes on from the platform, they can go, oh, this person said they're interested in, and this is what they're interested in. So when I click this as an individual or a member, I can actually add in some information. So I can put in senior account executive. Matt's, Matt's getting worried now. No, he's not, because I can't spell. <laughs> so I can put in a job title, I can put in a location, I can put in full time, and I can indicate that to just recruiters, so this is actually physical headhunters, or I could actually allow the entire network to see that. So again, if you really want to be a bit more progressive and active on that, you can physically go on and update your profile to say, contact me about graduate roles in this field, and uh, you know, graduating in May 2020. So you can physically do that. Okay, so I'll just discard that, so that doesn't get worried. Um, in terms of about, again, you're filling out information about yourself. Um, I'm passionate about this, my career to date has been dealing with, so I'm talking about my role, I'm not just filling out like a copy and paste. I can upload infographics or pictures, so if you're doing something that's outside of the norm, like a design course or art or something there, again, put, put up portfolio stuff, put things that matter. If you're doing engineering, put up some coding if you wish. Um, stand out. Just, just an example, uh, just two weeks ago I had a guy who stood out to do credit, he just literally got his friend to interview him and put it on YouTube and uh, uploaded the clip and it was very interactive, it was all related to the specific job and why he wanted it and it was very well prepared for but uh, when I did interview him last week I kind of felt that I already met the guy. Um, small just creative hacks to just get yourself to notice, right? Um, using all the tech that we have at our disposal these days, um, which is Pretty, pretty special. So um, you can you can really you know upload even if you have any papers that you created at university, anything that you can publicly release. Uh, interestingly, LinkedIn is one platform that academics have actually trusted with their information. They've tended to uh, generally shy away from social media uh, for a lot of uh, a long period of time, but we have noticed that um, they they have trusted LinkedIn with their information. And uploading content and they're on the platform, which is 
you know, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna see that acceleration. But by all means, this is really your area to, to leverage um, and upload yeah. relevant content. Uh, and as we scroll down here, again, you're filling out your information, your activity. Again, it's not just the CV. You're filling out information, your job titles, and you're going right down into education, and then right into licenses and certifications, which is what Matthew was talking about on LinkedIn. You can go do a quick course and then get that badge to say I've had that skill set or I've watched something and, and done a tutorial on it. Just, just one more piece. If you scroll up to the, the, the work experience, right, so this is probably more relevant in 13 months' time when when you leave your first employer, but you, you get a very sh short snapshot here of what you did at that company. As punchy and as impactful as possible. I'm hiring mostly sales professionals, right? So I wanna know, it's not just about kind of results and, and, and your number, it's about like how you, the impact you had in the organization, you know, maybe the projects that had very kind of, um, you know, move the needle and, and, and high impact all in terms of the, the company and outside the company, but, be very precise in terms of the impact that you have as an individual versus just pasting in your job description, which again is going to be the 80% versus the 20%. So yeah. again, small hacks. Yeah, definitely. And if you're doing an internship or something, you know, that you're going to be involved in a project, you can put that in there and talk about it. So it's all relevant. Well, let's just talk about, so that's the um, little hack there about show recruiters or show people on the platform, hey, I'm interested in this. But also what I want to do is, I want to just show you as, a, as if I was a recruiter by trade, or if I was in someone in the organizations that we work with that wants to find a graduate. Uh, and we talk about skills and why it's important to have a solid profile. Well, the more solid profile you have, the better picture, the better engagement it is, the better and easier it is for people like uh, talent acquisition or HR to find you. So if I, um, uh, this is the product we have that we um, pretty much sell to organizations to acquire talent, and this is what they're doing. They're coming in here, and they might go, Kenton, Kenton. And they click go, and they're opened up a whole network of 8,000 candidates in the Cape Town area. What they might do then is they might get into graduates and field of study, which I'll show you in a second. But it opens up um, a whole portal for them to really start engaging. And immediately, so if I'm that recruiter and I find these people of interest, I can just send an email to them and say, hey, I saw your profile, I'd like to have a conversation with you, we've got something of interest. So that's what's happening on the other side. So it's really important to have a solid profile. If I scroll down, there's all this stuff which I won't kind of bombard you with around skills, but it's, it's important to have in because this is the process they go through. They're going to say, okay, well, I need an accountant with accounting skills, or I need, uh, I need them to have a specialization in tax. Um, maybe I'll come down and I'll go right down to year of graduation. Well, actually, in accountancy, I want someone who graduated uh, or is about to graduate in the year 2019, and I add that in. And that's me now looking for people that are either about to be graduates or are graduates. There's 300 of them, um, and it's giving me an ability to start heading to them. So I don't know what we're laughing at there, but what it's doing is it's that simple. So it's that powerful for these organizations to head up and attract them, and then they can see 121 open opportunities. And they can start to go in here and go after them, and it's that simple. So that's why it's really important to have a solid profile because this is what organizations are doing. They're targeting people with skill sets, with details, that are in the right location, and that may be graduates. You can even be way more aggressive um, and not even put a job title in and just look for graduates. So what they could do is they go advanced, the top right, and eventually they'll click, here's uh, education. Year of graduation, schools here somewhere. There we go. So, I think it's actually the way around. So they literally do that. Just 102,000 people on the platform. <laughs> but what it does is, it allows me to go, okay, well actually I want to look at graduation dates. I might go look at 218 or something. So I want either someone who graduated in the last year or two or somebody who's about to graduate or whatever it may be. <laughs> and there's 21,000 people. So it's that simple. So again, it's really important. And this, the standout piece is, um, is really important about people that have good profiles. Final year, in, uh, there's a student there. 
Um, you know, so it's so important to have a caption. So that when I'm going through this as, a, as someone trying to attract talent, and I'm like, okay, let's have a look at their profile, let's see what they're about. Um, and that's what's happening on the other side of the coin. So we'll open up the Q&A in a minute. Is there anything else you'd like to add on that, Matthew? Yeah, I just wanted to um, show in terms of researching companies, right? So we obviously saw PwC as a company. How do you not like PCS? Yeah, yeah. So if you want to know, do your research in terms of you know the recruiters out there, what their values, what their culture is, because our data is telling us that that the uh, the workforce uh, of the future cares more about culture and values than pay. You call, you care more about work-life balance and flexibility than pay. You care more about, it's not just about pay, right? And employers are really struggling with this because they they can't, not all of them can authentically deliver on work on, on flexibility, right? Remote working, work from home. But, um, you know, I've seen it. I've seen tech companies, US tech companies coming to Cape Town and say, look, we, we need as many engineers as we can get. You can all work from home. Here's your budget to either go to WeWork or to one of the car office spaces or we'll build your home office and here's your nice salary. How on earth is, a, is an employer going to compete with that when that's something that you want? So, like, the cards are up in the air at the moment um, and it is all about you uh, versus it's about, I mean, uh, Josh Burston says the war for talent um, is over, the talent is won, which I know it's, you know, that is actually real. It, it's, it's all about you and it's about you researching your, your next play, as we call it, so your, your employers. You click on a life tab. So most companies that have a LinkedIn strategy will have a life tab, right? So a life tab is all about working here at PwC. Um, and it's got their EVP, so their employee value proposition, what it means to you. A lot of them might even have tailored pages for, for South Africa. Um, this Thursday night, we've got the LinkedIn Talent Awards. Uh, so sorry, here's PwC um, is their entry, entry level. level. So they grad why you should pick PwC as a graduate employer. So there's video content up here. It's a great place for you to explore and, and actually follow the company. So just click follow up top left. In your feed, you can start getting updates from that organization. Um, just some companies that, that we work with, um, as an example, you know, we do a lot of work with, with this organization called The Roof Co, right? They make computer games. Like, I love these guys. They're very cool. And um, being back in their office, they authentically deliver on, on what they promise as well. But, like, their career page is very different to a PwC, right? It's, it's kind of Lego. There's some Lego pieces that um, also it's the game with you. Um, with his headset on and his, all these monitors and... Like, you know, what A do? Yeah, what a de developer wants from a career is very different from what an accountant wants from, from their career. And employees are starting to, they know that, and they're making sure that their message resonates to gamers or developers who are going to hit this site versus PwC, maybe, maybe a bit more, a bit smarter, a bit more of a kind of a suit and tie uh, approach, which is not a bad thing, absolutely. Um, so it's just, you know, there's different uh, companies doing different things um, on the platform. So. Search for your company, click follow, and there's obviously jobs, and there's people that you might know as well as your alumni that work at that company. Again, ask for referrals, yeah. and you're in that top 20%. You can, you can literally just see on the right-hand side, as Matt's showing you there, the Rivka, where they studied. On the right-hand side, then, you can get an idea of anyone studying here, and where they used to study, so you can then maybe look for a mentor or someone of interest in that organization. Um, you can even go a bit deeper, um, just on that note. You go to Stellenbosch University, so click your own university, and on the left hand side is an alumni tab. Click alumni. You can literally map out where your alumni is working, where they work, where they live, and you can go a bit deeper if you wish, so we can go K Town. If I click K Town, everything will then change for me and it will show me people below. You can start to understand where they're working and what they're doing. It's that simple. You can connect with them, build connections. Hey, I'm a you know, current uh, student in uh, Stellenbosch. I'd love to connect you for future opportunities. So we have a, the VP at RBN. Uh, I mean, there's, there's more alumni from this university of, who've done exceptionally well in their careers than, than most. So, yeah, great opportunities, right? 
a lead, lead data scientist in um, Jumo World, a client of ours, tech company, kind of like the Rivco, real techie, but again, a lot of people here study data analysis and data science, so, you know, Gordon could be definitely a guy you want to reach out to and, and try leverage, uh, or try to get as a mentor, or just connect with them so you have a network. Um, so that's the alumni piece. But again, it's, it's all based on your profile, right? And just being able to understand what the, the concept of having a strong profile is. Um, our mission is to connect, um, you know, the world uh, professionals to make them more productive. So we do know their organizations so they can find you. So just put yourself out there. Um, I'll open up the Q&A before we finish up. So there probably is plenty of questions, but we have one just here in the blue. I'm going to start. Is that okay? Yes. So, so within your um, recruitment platform, you just went and said graduating 2019, for example. Is there a weighted list, or, or is everyone in a specific order? Um, as in, is there a scoring system that we can kind of have? Um, so uh, it's, an, it's an algorithm based on the details you have in that. So if I'm putting in all the details on the left hand side, that will rank you with most if you have most details that match that. So it is an algorithm, um, and it's also not just about 2019. They can look for graduates who have, um, you know, graduating in 2020, 2021. So they can also look for people that are future graduates. Yeah. So um, and increasingly, that's uh, the search algorithm is driven by um, AI, so it's artificially intelligent. So it can pick up not just information in your profile, but what we call intent data. So it's like heart data, which companies you follow. Uh, have you shown an inclination that we would never go down to an individual member uh, uh, perspective? We're governed by GDPR, so that is obviously governed by Poppy. So you, 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 a member first from a network perspective. I can speak long uh, about kind of trust and why LinkedIn is the most tr trusted platform, considering what's been happening in social recently uh, from business inside of it. Um, so that's intent data. So, um, have you been researching articles about being a, a you know, certain organisations, or which followers do you do you follow Simon Sinek, or do you follow you know individuals, thought leaders in the platform, which is starting to give us a bit more intent to run you as a professional? That's playing into the AI, um, which uh, is kind of it's kind of very much uh, the talking point in terms of where, where that's all going. Um, how relevant is like, what you post on social media, like Facebook and Instagram, in terms of what you also do in terms of the old algorithm? Yeah, yeah. Um, how relevant is the relevant? So, um, posting is, is a little less uh, relevant to uh, running a search like that because the search is always based on the details within your profile, less so about you posting something. The posting will be more so when it comes to you making a decision whether I should engage into or not. Are those posts um, you know, relevant? Are they, are they industry-led? Um, it's obviously a very different platform to Facebook around the content you put on it. But I don't know if anyone knows uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, the guy from VaynerMedia. Um, your, your, your message can be very much switched uh, to LinkedIn depending on, like, so, you know, if you're selling a t-shirt on Facebook, you might take a very different angle than you would on LinkedIn. But the reality is you're still selling a t-shirt. So I, I'd be very conscious about the posts you put on LinkedIn that are, like, corporate-led or, or something that if you're doing something in the university that's fun, it's, it's mentioning we're all having fun at Stellenbosch University. So it doesn't just look like um, something random. You know, something led that has an action on it. That's all I would say about posting um, you know, versus Facebook. Just on that, uh, LinkedIn also allows blogging long-form content. Right? So again, you guys are all industry or subject matter experts in your field of study. And I'd say 20%, I'd say 2%, 3%. Of people are actually using long form content to post. And if you want to stand out, like another massive hack in terms of getting into the top and being noticed is actually generating long form content. Because if I'm going to see a, a, a profile, I'm going to go straight to that long form post as a hiring manager, I'm going to read it. And immediately your streets ahead of the next person that all I can see is apples versus apples. Right? So these again, more hacks. Yeah, good question. As a graduate going into work now, what are the advantages of LinkedIn Pro versus LinkedIn Free? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the premium versus the free. Um, the premium will give you a bit more of ability as an individual to network uh, by, by sending actual detailed emails. So you can you can actually send a, a you know quite a 
contextualize the meshing system and saying it doesn't catch up with your this, this, and this versus when it's free. And it's usually just a connection request with a very kind of short, punchy line. Um, and you get a bit better search features. So without going into all the weeds and the differences, you can run a few more uh, searches as an individual on people. And then when you do find them, you can connect via in-mail, which is you're not connecting via connection request. So a connection request is like a friend request, right, in that sense. You, you add them to your network if they're there. When you send an email, it's nothing to do with a connection request. You may be asking for the info piece, um, and then you may connect with them separately. So it's more like a, I would call it maybe like an email, uh, in short, like you're emailing them versus a connection request. So it can get you straight into their inbox a bit easier, but it's, uh, it has its benefits, yeah. Sorry, just beside you. How do you connect with someone that doesn't want to accept your request? Have you had that problem on Tinder, bro? <laughs> Um, we, there's no, they, they have the option, it's a member's first swipe, like if someone adds you on Facebook, they can decline or not, and uh, they can swipe left or right, you know, it's, it's the same, it's the same with the connection, but there's no immediate, uh, immediate yes or no, so unfortunately, if they don't want to accept your request, there's nothing we can do, but if you do, what I'd say, if you're going to send a connection request, there is a, there is a sub, kind of subline that just says, please connect with me, just put something in there a bit more personal, that, and have a look at what their profile says, hey, I saw you, our alumni, I'd just love to connect with you. And the chances of that connection request happening are way better than, hey, just please connect with me. All right? Sorry. <laughs> yes? So, do you put your CV on your profile at all, or would you rather wait for a request to come in to see the CV process? I don't put a problem. No, I wouldn't recommend putting a CV on there. Um, I think if you can give what you care about, what your profile is about, then that's going to give you the opportunity to present the CV at a later date, whether it's applying for the job and they ask for a CV, or whether it's you going to do and bringing it, or whatever it means necessary. But I wouldn't necessarily post it um, like that, no. Yeah. Yeah, you do this an easy apply option for some jobs. Yes. What, what information does that actually use for your profile? Uh, pretty much your, your email associated to it, and then it will give a link to your profile. So that's why the, the profile is so important that it's probably the first thing they'll look at. So you easy apply, they'll get a list, they'll get your profile, and they'll make a decision on whether they should engage with you maybe based on that. Um, there obviously there's no CV attached, so it's just easy apply. So again, it's important to have a solid profile, a picture, you know, a bit about yourself. Because I think that's important and have it on there. So that first impression is key. Is that all right? And I'll take two more then, so that's the time. Top left in the blue hoodie, yep. What industry do you sorry. What industry uses LinkedIn the most? In South Africa? Um, I'd probably find financial services followed by tech. Um, but it's, it's, we're seeing it as a growing, growing industry. Like even uh, in South Africa, retail. Retail is hugely, hugely influential on the LinkedIn platform versus maybe five years ago it wasn't. Um, so they're all trying to get there and catch up. It's just some, some organizations take a little bit more change. Um, and I suppose convincing it to change, which is where me and Matt have to come in. But um, yeah, so they're getting there. So it was a question there, Matt. Yes, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, is it worth putting your, your small sort of student jobs that aren't necessarily relevant to the career you want to go to? I Yeah, I mean, um, I used to be a, uh, a radio DJ at UCT Radio. I used to deliver pizza for Butler's Pizza, right? So I, I, it's still on my profile. I mean, that's how I learned to work with money. Also, I want that to show that um, I was self kind of funded and I, and I kind of motivated from an early, early age. So, um, again, what impact did that job have? What did you learn from us as kind of the headline? Would be not not just your job description. Um, that most certainly it's it's relevant to 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 a, a certain degree, right? You don't want to um, you know selling lemonade outside your house when you're like nine years old. Maybe that's your entrepreneurial spirit, and you've got a story behind that. Then definitely do that. But just type, make it meaningful. So I'll catch the time, and I'm sure you've loads of questions. We'll be one more here at the bottom, and then we'll, we'll finish with a nice selfie with everyone. Uh, and we'll wrap up. Yes, go ahead. Um, yep. 
So your, your first, uh, so the connection request, so the, the question is basically when you see a first and a second or a third beside the name, that means they're either in your first degree network, so you are connected. So in short, if they're in your first degree, they are connected to you, so they're like a friend in that case, they have accepted your friend request. If they are second, that technically means that they are connected to someone as a first degree that you are connected to. So yeah, mutual, basically. And a third is basically you are a third line connection between a mutual and a mutual. That makes sense. So in short, um, yeah, that's kind of how it works. But it's, it doesn't matter in terms of that should you or should you not connect with them. Uh, your first is your first, that's your core network. And your second and third, and even beyond, you should be engaging if they're relevant to, to what you think you want to aspire to. So um, I think we'll conclude on that conscious of time. I'll take a week. I'd like to, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Kuhn and Hanko for, uh, for the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, I'm do you have a few words you want to say or? Yeah. Let's just first go back.